Retrotech Ralph is proudly sponsored by my friends at One Click Print. However you want your prints, they offer quality and premium service on a variety of materials. Visit them at oneclickprint.com. Hi guys, Retro Trek Ralph here with another unboxing of a sci-fi space toy. This time it's Micro Machines. Now I used to have a lot of Micro Machines growing up. Oh, you, we were collectors, I wasn't really a kid when they came out. But there's one special one that, that I wanted to get for recollecting all my stuff, which was the Babylon 5 set. Now they made six sets of these. And I will, before anybody says anything in the comments, I will not be opening these. These are, for want of a better word, mint. I bought these on eBay for an absolute dirt cheap bargain. But the cards don't look like they've been water damaged. They're still stuck to the back. It was never sealed on that bottom bit there. But there we go. I wanted the Star Trek ones and the Star Wars ones as well, but unfortunately, yeah, they'll come in time, I suppose, anyway. Here's the, the first view of the first four sets, which for some reason they did this, the same as with the Star Trek ones, they did certain amounts of them and then suddenly it changed because they extended the series and they got a lot longer and, and more other versions of whatever on there. So this first set here, we have the Babylon 5 station, Volon Transport and Green Ship. Green Ship? Hmm. Okay. So Green Ship. Um, Skylark, commercial transporter, cl one kilometer per second. Yeah, you got lots of uh, stuff on there. I don't know what the Green Ship was. It looks very much like... It's not Drazi, is it? That's that's different. I mean, I, I, I really do need to go back into Babylon 5 and watch from the beginning. So what we're going to do, I'm going to get you close to these as possibly can. I have the lighting above that so you can see the reflections on, on this with it being lost, but I'm I'm definitely not going into these. Don't even ask to, to open these up anyway. So we have the Babylon 5 station there. It's not too bad, it's a little bit, because the front forks part there is meant to have two prongs, you can only see the one. Although I'm sure that you can be fine, that's the um, bridge section. Or the docking port on the front there, solar sails on the side, all the way to the back. Shame we can't see the back of these because they're inside the pack. If I ever get round to doing or buying a full set that's already been opened, then yes, you'll have a lot more closer view. But at the minute, it's tough. I am not opening these. They're still properly everything sealed onto there with the stands and everything. I'd love to open these up, but no. Right, so then we have the Volon transport. These Volons were always organic ships. They were alive. You understand how difficult this is doing a video. I mean, if I turn the light off, there we go. We, we lose one reflection for another. It, it's kind of, I prefer there, get more detail. They're kind of like, they would go this way around so that the fan at the back would be opened up. So the back of of the ship but all these apart from the station would be able to go into hyperspace and then we have green ship i don't know why it's called green ship Maybe because it's a ship and it's green i don't know that it does look familiar to me for some reason i don't get which one it is it doesn't actually state even in the mac machine museum i've got on here it just comes up with green ship i'm sure if i went through the series i'll be able to figure out exactly which one this one is so there we have Babylon 5, number one. Same back on button number two. Uh, a bit too close on zooming in, but unfortunately we're going to stay at this. Second one is the Volon Cruiser. Cruiser, this thing was massive. I mean, they did have capital ships as well. I'm not sure if there's a capital ship in the collection, whether or not this was the biggest Volon ship you'd have. I mean, it's just... The Babylon 5 series was absolutely brilliant because it was the same sort of time as when Deep Space Nine came out. And it was just basically 
set at a station. It was the idea that came out with the 90s. Let's not have sci-fi shows that go out and see strange new worlds. Let's let the aliens come to us. The Raider ship there, you saw a lot of the Raiders in the first series and it kind of died off. But they were there just as pirates, should we say. Very sleek, sleek, thin ships. Just basically a, a delta wing configuration. Camouflage for no reason at all, to be honest. As soon as you're in space, you'd expect it being black for camouflage. Hmm. And we have the non-transport. They were in the. I think that was was that within the first episode. Or was no, the first episode was the non-station was destroyed by the Centauri, and that caused the first big battle in the um, series. It was absolutely a stunningly brilliant series. See everything on the ships, everything on the special effects were all CGI. There were no models. It looks a little bit iffy for the time. Nowadays, it's completely the norm to do CGI. There's there's very rare any sort of yeah any any sort of uh, model making at all in anything. So we have set three now. We have there that looks very much like a ship that you would probably get in. Uh, there, there is there is micro scene sets that have I think there's a space or something that are very much a, an amalgamation of different styles, but that is the Centauri ship. And very purple Centauri transport. It looks like things, but copied from things. Let's go on to the next one. We finally get a Star Fury. Which is kind of like an X-wing fighter, but without the front nose cone. Just all you, you stand up at the front there with the cockpit and the wings and the guns on the edge. Actually, I think the guns were underneath the feet, weren't they? I'm not quite certain. Oh, this, this reflection's killing me. I'm gonna have to open them up. No, I'm not. <laughs> you see the big engines on the back there. Very manoeuvrable in space. Very short range. Although you could go through a jump jump gate if needed B. And the final one on this set is the Minbari Cruiser. These were massively feared in the war between the Minbari and the Earth and Earth Force. Part organic I think these were. I'm not entirely certain but the Minbari were a species with a big bone on the back of the head. Delenn changed herself to be a, a bridge between the humans and the the Mimbari. Sadly, the actress who played Delenn died a few years ago. Is it Mira Furlan? Actually, there's a few people who've actually died from the Babylon 5 series, which is a shame that they can't actually get a, do anything to make a new series because the half of the cast have, have actually passed away unfortunately. Collection 4 now, we start off with the Mimbaru Flyer again. Very purple, which was their organic sort of look. I'm not sure if this is the ship that you'd lay down inside it. I'm sure because that's the cockpit there, your head would be in there but you would be laid down like a, like a, a weird sort of Tron bike or something but very very weirdly fluid ship. Very, very interesting. Back onto the non ships now. We see a lot of these non fighters in the series. There we go. Big guns on the front. Nons, it was uh, Andreas Atzakatsulas who used to play a couple of characters in... He did, he played um, Admiral Tomalock in Star Trek Next Generation. Big massive guns on the front there, big guns. As your car came from starting off as being a little bit of a, yeah, we're not quite sure what he's doing, why he's being like he is, and then becoming a really a martyr for the, um, for the non-people. Finally, we have the Battle 5 shoot crew shuttle. The reflections there looking very much like if, if any plays elite dangerous it's like a panther clipper but without the um the side landing pads landing pods another one of those ships that in elite dangerous if you ever play it that we really could do with getting into this into the game but 
elite. Frontier don't want to do that. There we go. Number seven. Can we have a look underneath this? No, the cardboard's in the way. So that's the first four done there. And each one of these on the back, they will have had all of these anyway. So there we go. There's a the full technical, as much as you can on these. One pilot, 12 crew. Unknown. Ship appears to be a type of symbiotic Volon life form. Mm, very mysterious. So then they added on two extras. Now, Babylon 5, number 5. Now, you probably will see these a bit better anyway now because they've got the blue background. On the back here, all four sets there, and then they added 5 and 6, non, non, Earth Force 1, crew shuttle. Actually, the crew shuttle. Hello. One. Ah, right, we're going to cross, sorry. <laughs> I thought it was down. Force 1, non, oh, the, the, the atmospheric shuttle. Yeah, we'll get around to that in a second. So we, we have to start with, with the... Earth Alliance shuttle, or the atmospheric shuttle. A few of these to get down to the planet which was, the Babylon Fire Station was orbiting, which was Eps was around Epsilon Irid Iridani, which in technicality terms, in real terms, is actually quite close to us on Earth. It's, it's quite close, one of our neighbours, probably about what, 10, 12 light years, maybe even less than that, eight light years, I, I'm not 100% certain without digging into everything. There's another little shuttlecraft there, got the wing on the back, the tail, wings, big engines on the back. Of the next one, we have the non heavy cruiser. Uh, this is obviously not on scale to the smaller shuttle, but big weapons, big engines, and a small bridge at the front. Yeah. Very interesting the designs of all these stuff. It's just, it's, it's mind-boggling how people can think of this sort of stuff for spaceships. And then finally we've got the Centauri passenger ship, which again looks very much like a, well, is it a armadillo sort of thing? Or is it just domed with the, the cockpit on the front, the tail on the back? Centauri symbols, there we go. For micro machines, for the size, this is my finger, obviously. Micro machines, there's a hell of a lot of detail on these. It's really good. And then finally, we have number six. This is quite a rare one, to be honest. We have, to start with, the Earth Force One, which was the President's shuttlecraft. Well, that is his base station. Looks very much like a station, like a Babylon station, but not. This would be able to go through a jump gate. It's not jump gate, is it? That's jump gates from. Is it? It is jump gate. Hmm. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the in the um, comments, as usual. Thank you. But yeah, this this set, the number six set, was actually really really rare. But to get it in this condition, and this is absolutely just spot on mint, is quite rare to get. There are some of these on eBay. If you want to go and get some, there are some on eBay. Different. Well, the quality probably may be a little bit different. The non-heavy dreadnought. So you'll have to see there's a certain pattern between Centauri and non and the Alliance. Here's where another big ship. Very much like an anaconda from Elite Dangerous. But, you know, different. You know, that's wire on the top there anyway. That's not part of the ship, that's holding it in place. What they would do with these. And finally, we have this little fellow, the Marie Celeste. Is it a cargo ship, Earth Force ship? It does look very unsymmetrical, very weird design for this. Again, apologies for the reflections. Just, I'm not unba unbagging these, not unboxing these at all. These are worth far too much to open up on a video. Plus, the stuff I get is going to be kept and mint for as long as I possibly can. I do like collecting my toys. 
And then we have the Mary Celeste. Let's have a look at the back for the Mary Celeste, shall we? There we go. Tescan class transport. Weapons none, thrust for that, and crew of 80. Earth Force 130, that unfortunately got destroyed. It was the end of Series 1, was it? Or Series 2? And the Dreadnought. Remember Crew 3? I thought that was a big ship. Oh well. Two 500 gigawatt Gnarth laser cannons. Cool. Very cool indeed. Now I'll just leave you there with all a lot to actually just get your details on. You want to pause the video? But well, there we go. There are six sets of the mag machines. They're mint, doing absolutely nothing, going to be doing absolutely nothing. Gonna get nicely secured, tucked up in my collection somewhere. But yeah, these these are I have had a set of these quite a while ago, and it, it is good to have them. It's just I've never opened one, and I would that is, I would love to open one for you, but unfortunately, I'm not that brave. But like I say, these are going to be kept as collectors and stored away, squirreled away for the future, shall we say? So, with that in mind, hope you've enjoyed a, a good look at the Micro Machines Babylon Five a full collection series. There. Bear in mind, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please help out the channel any way you can. If you want to be a Patreon, links are in the description. If you want to help out with a donation, please get in touch. Email me, part of the channel description. Yeah, share if you can. Like, thumbs up. And I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.